with Overwatch 2 Season 10 being out for about two weeks now. If you guys have been playing the game yourself or just even keeping up with Overwatch 2 at all, Season 10 is probably one of the worst seasons we've had in quite a long time. There are a lot of issues with this season that I think need to be fixed and a kind of a lot of reasons why I have not really been playing the game very much. I've been trying to play ranked and trying to grind and rank. I've not really been doing much like content wise for you guys. So I'm going to kind of talk about why the game is really this absolutely really bad right now and why this is probably one of the worst seasons we've had so far with the game. All the issues and like everything with the game that needs to be fixed going into like the mid season patch and into season 11 with this game. So kind of the main thing. So if you guys don't like the rant videos or the discussion videos, and I don't know what to tell you because you guys are going to be in for like a huge rant because that's kind of what I'm going to be going on here because there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about with this season and with the game currently. So yeah, let me know how you guys like Season 10 in the comments down below if you guys are enjoying Overwatch 2 Season 10 up until this point or at least before the mid-season patch. I think in like two weeks we're going to get a mid-season patch with some balance changes and a few other things hopefully. But uh, I don't know, even though it's like it's such in a bad state right now to where I don't even think like a... Like a mid-season balance patch will actually even fix the game very that very much because I think we need like an entire new season full of changes for them to at least try to change some stuff because the mid-season patches really aren't the biggest of patches and like that is not going to be enough to fix everything. So um, I don't know. Even season nine, like you can argue season nine was really bad because we had Malga pretty much dominating dominating the game for a solid two months from like oh, like November all the way up to like January pretty much. I I don't know. But I think even Season 9, like, I, I hated Season 9, but I think I even hate Season 10 more. I really do. I thought Season 9 was probably the worst season up until this point, but you can always leave it to Blizzard to actually top the expectations because they'll always one-up themselves, and they did it again with the season probably being the worst one that we've had so far. Uh, let's kind of get into it. I, the first thing I want to talk about is Venture. If you guys like Venture, I, I don't really care if you like Venture or hate Venture. I don't I hate Venture. I think she's really bad for the game. You guys know what Venture is. She's a she's the newest damage hero that they gave us with Overwatch 2 Season 10. She got added for this season. She's probably the most broken hero I think we've got. At least as like the DPS characters. I don't think she was uh, she's as broken as like Soldier and on release when Overwatch 2 officially dropped because I think he, she was probably the most broken one of all time. But like I don't think she's that broken. But I think there's only like one thing that would actually that's kind of holding her back from being like the most broken DPS ever released and that's just because she doesn't have like any damage and she she her range is like pretty much delivered limited so she only goes at like close to medium range that's that's the only thing that's really holding her back from being like the most broken dps of all time i think one of the main things that absolutely just ruining the season right now the two main things are the balance especially with the tanks and and the new hero venture venture just ruins the game i don't give a shit what anybody says she is not fun to play against at all. She may be really fun to play, and I think the reason why she is really fun to play is because she's just so broken. She takes literally no skill to play. She has some of the best damage out of the entire hero roster, probably in the game, out of all the DPS. She has crazy mobility and survivability. You pretty much never die when you're playing her, at least if you somewhat know what you're doing and not playing dumb. She has a really spammable ult that just destroys everything that isn't a tank. In like one or two hits that is extremely spammable with how much damage you do. Like I, I don't know what else she really wants. She also has crowd control. Like I don't know what else you really want out of a DPS. She is probably the most broken DPS just mainly because she just does everything. She has damage. She has survivability slash mobility. She has crowd control. She has a really good spammable alt. Like the only drawback that's making Venture not the most broken DPS release of all time like a soldier is, it's just because she does not have long range. She only goes to around about close to medium range, and that's all she really does. So you have to kind of get close enough to somebody to actually do damage to them. If Venture had long range and you were able to like throw damage out like across the map, some similar to some of the other DPS in the game, I think she would by far be one of the most broken DPS, probably the most broken DPS we've gotten right alongside the soldier for the entire game's launch so far for the 10 seasons the game's been a thing. I don't know what they need to do with Venture to nerf her. I really do not. I haven't even been playing Venture. I tried to play her. I, I hate her so much to where I don't even want to play her myself because I'm at the point where I just want her to get nerfed into the fucking ground. I am so sick of playing against Venture. 
And not to mention they actually put her under ranked. He is people, the Overwatch devs, with the current state of adventure and how busted she is, thought it was actually good for the first time ever with a new hero release to put Venture into ranked when she's probably the most broken DPS in the entire game. And you want to know how that's going? Venture is pretty much in every single ranked lobby. And if your entire team looks like, what do you really need to actually do to counter a Venture? Is your entire team needs to go after her. If your entire team does not focus her down every time she's alive, she just does whatever she wants. She keeps getting picks on your back line or your DPS. And she just runs the entire lobby. You pair that with some of the most broken tanks we have currently right now, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Stuff like Arisa and Mauga, which you also have to try to deal with. And you're just in for a fucking disaster, especially in your solo queue ranked lobbies. She is so broken. I don't know even know where to let, like start with like the balance. I need her, she, like, she needs to be nerfed in the ground. If I was actually balanced the game, like I would nerf her into the absolute fucking ground. It's actually at the point where I'm actually surprised we do not even have like a hot fix for venture i really don't like i i don't know I, if they're really waiting for mid-season to, to nerf venture i like it cannot get here fast enough she is ruining the game especially ranked because she's in she's in every single ranks lobby like your mid middle tier ranks i don't i'm my my ranks at least from what i'm playing for like tank right now i'm in like your mid-tier golds like your mid-tier plat games she's in every single lobby and she's running every single lobby i don't know about you guys if you're in higher tiers or ranks even like your lower tiers I'm assuming it's probably the same. Same with some of the tanks, like Arisa and Malga are just running lobbies, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys. I think what, the one thing I would do is I would actually just increase her, all of her cooldowns. I'd nerf the shit out of her damage. I'd nerf her all charge, and then go from there. That's what I would do. And I would actually put out a hotfix to actually nerf Venture, because I think she's just that bad for the game. Really awful. Awful hero. I, I don't know. I, she could have been a really good, good hero, like... She had all the potential to be balanced, like especially even like giving the, us like a, a like a three day trial of the hero before she was even released. With this season, you think they would actually get the balance correct, but they ended up just absolutely getting, I don't know, like absolutely screwing over the balance. It is really really bad. It's another thing like every single season, like I don't know what the problem is. Why is it when we ever every time we get a new hero, why is the new hero just uh, absolutely broken? on release why can we never have a hero that is actually balanced on release especially when you're getting feedback and the devs are taking feedback at least for balance wise and like playability wise with giving everybody like a free trial of the hero like a few weeks before a season launches mainly to get data and balance input and that is what we're getting on release i do not know how you can absolutely just fucking royally fuck that up when you have all that data and all that feedback even beforehand before they release into the game and they still somehow release broken on release and they just run the entire game and ruin the entire game for everybody i have no idea kind of another reason why i just don't really want to play recently i've just kind of been playing ranked just the only reason i've been playing ranked which i'll talk about too is just i want to try to get a jade skin i'm kind of close to getting to a jade skin so that's kind of why I've been playing ranked. At least that's kind of my priority. At least, at least recently when I do have time where I do feel like going on and torturing myself. But like apart from that, that's why I've not really been playing very much. That's why I haven't really been streaming the game as much or like doing as much content for you guys. And I probably won't until she gets nerfed for mid-season in like a few weeks. Another thing we have talked about, we kind of been talking about a little bit already, but the awful balance. If you guys know about the tanks right now, if you haven't even played the game or if, if you're living under a rock, the two best tanks in the game right now are, are Orisa and Malga. I don't know about you guys, but like I'm a tank player. The main thing I play, play is tank. The only tank I really play is Hog. Going into every single ranks lobby and just having to go against like Malga or Orisa every single game and like almost pretty much automatically losing unless I, either I switch or my teammates actually like switch to try to counter their tanks is absolutely just so fucking bad. It legit makes me want to fucking close the game and just be done. It is awful. I don't think I've ever went into a game, just especially as like a tank, tank player, paint playing like one tank mostly, and like going into a game and like having every single lobby be either Malga or Arisa every single fucking game. And like having pretty much almost losing every single match, depending on like what my team does or if I have to, I'm being forced to switch. Like if I don't switch or my team doesn't switch, it's pretty much an automatic win for whoever's playing Arisa or Malga currently in the game. 
You think they would have learned too when when Malga was released, when he was running the game for two months and just brooding season nine? They finally nerfed him and then they buffed him again for season ten. And like towards the end or towards the middle of season nine. They gave him some quality of life buffs and they buffed him again for season ten. I, I really don't know what like the balance team needs to be fucking terminated. And I, I, I don't know how they're balancing the game. And they're being paid to balance the game when they have no idea what they're doing. At all. Same with Ariza. Like, whose idea was it to keep buffing Ariza over, like, the past two or three seasons with, like, small buffs every single patch? Like, there is no downside to Ariza at all. She has no weakness. Ar Ariza is one of the only tanks in the game that has, like, no weakness. She has great damage at any single range. She has Fortify, which negates damage and gives her shields and crowd control immunity. She has a really solid ult because they buffed the shit out of her ult recently. She has crowd control of her own. She has crazy damage numbers. Like, she has everything. There is there's no downside to picking a Reese right now. She's a tank that has legit no weakness. And she pretty much duels any single tank on the roster. She can win versus any tank on the roster, pretty much. The only checks that she do, do ha does have are some that are like some supports like on a nade and there's a sleep dart and stuff if you can actually land a sleep dart which is she's not in fortify and there's a few other things like damage orb and there's a few of the dps that kind of do a little bit better into her but as for tanks she wins pretty much every single tank i think the only other tank that she can maybe lose versus it, i guess maybe malga but even then like you have a lot of crowd control and like a lot more survivability than he does so I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, same with Malga. Like, Malga is just absolutely busted. Malga is not as good as Ares. I think Ares is, like, the king of the game right now, but, like, the, yeah. by far the second most broken tank overall. If you're not playing playing Ares, you're playing Malga every single game. They're the two most broken tanks, and, like, everything else is secondary. Alright, as I'm actually editing this video, I'm gonna throw this in here because I shit you guys not, as I was editing this video, we actually got a like a, a really fast patch, like balance, small balance patch for Orisa and Venture. They actually nerfed Orisa, which I'll throw a screenshot of all the balance on screen right now. We got three balance changes. One that's of the entire like anti-healing passive for the DPS, which is awful. We got Orisa nerfs, and then we got some Venture nerfs. I'm gonna be real with you guys, actually, at least from my, what I've already played. Uh, I've, I've actually been playing. I didn't even know I was actually playing on this patch already. This patch actually went live earlier today. I just realized that they actually put out a patch just now, though. But this actually went live earlier today. At least from what I've played, Arisa is actually back to being at least somewhat balanced. She's no longer, like, the best tank in the game that's, like, running the entire game. But at least with the, the Venture nerfs that we did get here, these Venture nerfs are not enough. Venture is still absolutely just crazy good, so... I think they're going to have to nerf Venture again. It's a good step in the right direction, but Venture is still going to be need to be having some more nerves. I think she's still crazy, at least from what I've played against her. She's still, like, rolling entire lobbies, so I don't think these nerfs really did much for her at all. Only thing that really did was cause a few different, like, breakpoints and damage numbers, which didn't really do that much. And with how survivable she is anyways, like, the, the breakpoints and the little damage changes that she got, like, don't really do anything at all when she's still is able to survive and stick around long enough anyways just do as much damage as she wants so then we also got the anti-healing change for the entire dps passive so we're going back to season nine y'all we are back in the season i was wondering why i was dying so much earlier too when i was playing i was playing for like an hour or so earlier i was wondering why i was dying so much it's because they changed the anti-healing passive back again i really don't know why we're reverting the, the anti-healing passive from 15 back to 20 percent do they not want tanks to have fun? I have no idea. And not only that, now Roadhog, and there's a few other tanks in the game that have like no shields that really rely on healing. Malga's not really because he has more of a passive, but like a lot of the tanks that rely on healing or that type of thing, now with the passive being at 20% um, again, like stuff like Roadhog are like now the worst tanks in the game again. So that's great. Thanks, thanks, Blizzard. You guys went back to Season 9, even though you, you we thought you learned your lesson from Season 9 when the anti-healing pass of 20%, everybody complained about how awful it was to play tank and play the game that way. Oh man, this game's fun. Overwatch devs, the balance team, zero IQ, no brain devs that absolutely don't learn anything. You gotta love it. On with the rest of the video. I thought I'd just throw this in here because uh, otherwise I know there's gonna be somebody below that's gonna comment. Oh, well, they, they threw out a balance patch, I know.
I really don't know. I, I really refuse to know why it's so difficult for them to actually balance the tanks. You want to know why? Because we should have been in 6v6. The game should still be in 6v6. Because the devs do not know how to fucking balance the game for 5v5. That's an entirely different video, but you fucking know I'm correct. Same with everybody else. And the devs probably know it too, because they've tried it multiple times already, and they tried to flip the game upside down for Season 9, and they failed miserably, and we still have balance issues. So it didn't do anything either, so I think the only solution balance-wise, if the game ever is supposed to be balanced, is to go back to 6v6. That's the only thing. And then you have some useless heroes in the game right now, shit like Symmetra. Symmetra, like, I don't know even know what she does. The last time I seen a Symmetra in one of my games, all she did was just feed free kills the entire time. She just gets dove, and her damage numbers are garbage. The only time she does damage is if she's able to get fully charged. She's bad. She's just a mobility bot that just throws on a teleporter for her team. That's all she does. You have Farah that should have been... That has been completely dead ever since she's gotten reworked. Why they reworked her a few seasons ago, I have no idea. Probably the worst rework of all time. She needs her rework entirely be reverted, or we need to go back to 6v6 for her to ever be viable ever again. You got McCree, that actually was decent. Decent at, like, the start of Overwatch 2. They took away his stun, they gave him a ma magnetic grenade. But then they nerfed the shit out of the magnetic grenade now to where it's impossible to land on anybody apart from the tank. So all McCree does is just walk around and try to headshot people with his pistol. That's all he's good for, and if that's what you're doing, you're better off just playing any other hero. I don't know. I don't know. There's going to be some people that disagree with some of those heroes are useless, but I don't give a shit what anybody says. I think a two-year-old could probably see the same thing. You probably balance the game even better. Another thing we actually got for this season was actually Clash. Clash is actually a new game mode. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a point game mode, it's kind of like King of the Hill, to where you get like a certain time limit and like five points each. Whoever gets to five points first wins. I, I don't even know if you guys played this because it was really uncommon, even like in the, the, the quick play queues. It had a really low like chance of even getting into like a, a clash game. And I, I think they might have actually even taken it out of the game because I haven't even been pl playing it in ranked. I don't think it's in ranked, but I have never even played it like once in ranked. I think it was just for like quick play and like your arcade mode i'm not even sure if it's still in the game but if it's if it's out of the game what they need to do is they need to never put it in the game again clash is garbage and it just goes to show you like clash if you guys even play it those of you guys few of you probably did get lucky enough to actually play it if you happen to get lucky to actually get into a game i don't know why the, the chances of playing a clash match were so low when it was a new game mode but if you were lucky enough to play it like you guys would probably even know like if you played overwatch one like it on the, it was like the same maps. I think it was one or two of the same maps it was on. And like it's pretty much the same thing as like 2CP. Like I don't understand why they got rid of 2CP from Overwatch 1, which was 2 Capture Point, which was one of the, one of the most fun game modes in Overwatch 1. And the, the main problem was the maps. They reworked the maps finally. So if they really wanted to, they could have brought back 2CP with all reworked maps. And they could have gave that to us instead. But they, instead they waste their time on something like Clash. And they, they're giving us that clash instead when it's a worse game mode. It's not nearly as fun. I'll, I'll never know why they ever took 2CP away. Especially when they reworked all the 2CP maps now already, which they have said multiple times in the past. Most of the maps that 2CP were on have been reworked or have plans of being reworked. So then why do we not have 2CP back? I have no idea. One of the funnest game modes from Overwatch 1 that got taken away and is never going to come back, probably. Just because of dev stupidity. Uh, a few more small things. Uh, the battle pass. I don't, I'm not really going to talk about this very much, but the battle pass and the skins for this for the season are also really bad. I, I guess if you like the Mercy skin, like there's a Mythical Mercy skin for this update. If you like the Mythical Mercy skin, by all means, go buy that and spend your money on that. But I, I think the Mercy skin is even really bad. I think out of the battle pass, like, apart from the Mercy skin, which is a mythical, I think there's maybe, like, one or two other, like, non-mythical skins that are at least decent at best. Apart from that, the main problem with the battle pass still is it's just filled with garbage. Especially if you don't buy the battle pass, like, the free track is just a bunch of filler garbage. If Even if you do buy the battle pass, like, the majority of the stuff is just useless garbage. You'll never use, like, most of the stuff that you get from the battle pass. It's just filler. 
I think the only reason why you're even buying the Battle Pass is mainly for the Mythic skin. And the Mythic skin by itself is arguably even only worth like $10. I, I wouldn't even really pay $10 just for the, a lot of the Mythic skins we've been getting recently. The last two have been pretty damn bad, so... I don't know. You could argue that as well, but... I think the only like good change they made to the Battle Pass, they're finally putting like the Overwatch coins from challenges into the Battle Pass. So now you can actually, if you get like, even if you play for free, you get like 600 Overwatch coins from playing the Battle Pass. But still, that's not actually enough to buy an entire Battle Pass. So in, you have to pretty much play through t two entire seasons of a Battle Pass and complete them all to get 1,200 coins to have enough free coins to actually buy the next one for free. And then even then, you'll, you'll be able to buy a Battle Pass the third season afterwards. But after that, you won't be able to buy another one for another two seasons. And that's if you complete the entire Battle Pass and get all the coins. Still not good enough. I don't know why they don't put it like Fortnite. Like Fortnite, if you complete the Battle Pass, you actually get more money back in like actual like premium currency from completing like an over or like a Fortnite Battle Pass. I think each like, like it costs 950 for a Fortnite Battle Pass. And then you get like twelve or thirteen hundred Fortnite V Bucks back through the battle pass just for completing it. I don't know why they don't do that for Overwatch. Even if it just pays for itself, like if we complete it, we get a thousand back. So we're just able to keep buying the battle pass over and over every season. Apex Legends does the same thing. You get all your money back. I think you get a thousand back every single time you you complete the battle pass for every single season. That's why I buy buy every single Apex battle pass. Even if I don't like the skins or anything, well, I'm like, oh, well, if I, I complete it, which I probably will with how much I play the game, then I'm going to get all my money back anyways, and I'll be able to buy the, the next Battle Pass for next season. It would have a lot more people buying the Battle Pass and a lot more people playing, actually trying to complete and play the game. Don't know why they don't do that, and I keep, I'll keep i keep on saying it until, like, the end of time, until they actually do that with the Battle Pass. It's one of the main problems why it's garbage. And then ranked, last thing I kind of want to talk about is ranked. I was talking about earlier, like how the only thing I've really been playing recently is ranked, just mainly because I'm, I think I'm around about like a thousand away from a, a Jade skin. I have around about like, I think 1900 points or like close to 2000 points. So I'm kind of close to a Jade skin. I kind of want to get a Jade skin for like Hog or like some of the other, one of the other characters I play a lot. And uh, it, it's been a, it's been a grind, y'all. I think I've played close to like 100 ranked games this season so far with like the first two weeks of the season. And uh, it's been really bad. I haven't really been playing like quick player that much at all. Just mainly been ranked. And uh, it's been really bad. I, I really don't know what the problem with ranked, especially like ranking up. It's really weird to where like some games you'll get like 20% points on like a win. And then like some games you only get like 5 to 10% for some reason. It's really weird. And then if you go on a loss streak, you get a volatile. And the game actually, like, punishes you for losing, which is really fucking stupid. I don't know why that's even a thing. Not to mention the throwers. Like, the balance of the game is an entirely different issue. Like, you take that in consideration with Ranked as well. Having to deal with Venture and then Mauga and Arise and a bunch of other shit in Ranked. And then you have people that are going into Ranked still and throwing your matches. Whether they just sit spawn or they just purposely throw your games by not switching or just not playing at all. Or you have people that go on the voice chat or in the chat that just shit, shit talk you and type slurs and like a bunch of other shit and they never get banned. I don't know how many people I've tried to like report this season and not a single one of them's been banned at all. I think at least over like 50 to 100 people probably I, I've, that I've reported just for like going in the chat and shit talking or throwing my games. And not a single one of them's been reported or like I wouldn't say reported but like banned at all. At least that I know of. They don't ban anybody. That's kind of the main problem with Ranked 2. It's a clown show. Anybody can go into Ranked, and like no matter which rank you are, you're going to sell people in your, in your games just going into Ranked to throw because they think it's funny, and they know they'll never get banned for it, so they don't really give a fuck. So can you really blame them? That's kind of more of the devs' fault because they don't fucking ban anybody from Ranked. They want to have a, a competitive game mode, but then everybody thinks it's a, a clown show because... Like, they don't ban anybody. The, the people that are, are, are actually taking it seriously are able to get in, so they're into ranked, and it's ruined for everybody else, so... Then everybody else thinks it's also a joke as well, and it's not really... Is it actually just, like, a competitive mode, or is it just a, a longer quick play with a longer queue time? I'm not sure. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I know it's been a really long video, but there's a lot of shit I wanted to talk, to, talk about during this. 
How have you guys been enjoying Overwatch 2 Season 10? What are some of the main issues or main things you guys would change? I don't even know what they would change with the mid-season. There's a lot of stuff I would change. I would nerf lot, nerf Venture, nerf a bunch of stuff I talked about earlier. A few other things. I don't even know what it, what they would even do for mid-season patch or even like for like next season. Because at this point, like, it's going to take a lot of stuff to make the game a lot better. They do say they have some stuff on the way and they're working on some stuff. So hopefully it changes and hopefully this next season's a lot better. But I think season 10 overall, even within mid-season patch that maybe fixes some stuff, it's going to be a kind of a wash and kind of one of the worst ones we've had probably in the entire game's history up to this point. So let me know what you guys think in the current season in the comments down below. Leave a like, subscribe, share the video. Our is kind of more of a rant discussion video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you guys like this video, and it does well, keep on bringing you guys' way once in a while. Hopefully I don't have to do any more videos like this, but we'll see how it goes. Apart from that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching.